Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at Blender 2.79 and we're looking at the Starburst tutorial. So if you are following the Pop Circle tutorial and the Pop Line tutorial, then you'll move right into the Starburst tutorial. Alright, so what we're going to use, we're going to use the, um, the Pop Line from our tutorial to help us to read the Starburst. And there are three ways to do this that I know of. You know, there may be more, but I'm going to show you the three and the benefits of and the cons of each. So let's get straight into it. You know, the first one I'm going to do is first thing you're going to do is to um, prepare our 3D view. We're going to delete our cube with a delete button X, or we can go to object and delete. So delete. Good. We're going to go ahead and press seven to move to this on the numpad to go to the X on the horizontal and the Y on the vertical viewpoint. So that's what we're seeing for predictable movement. Um, and we also see down the bottom left that this is on Y and the X axis. Good. Next, we're gonna snap our camera with Control Alt and zero. And uh, we are in camera mode because we can see that the outside is dark gray and the inside is a light gray. And we can select by right clicking this box here which is the camera. And if we toggle with zero on the numpad, we can see that we are indeed in, the camera is indeed snapped to the view. And that was control odd and zero number pad zero for the camera. So let's go ahead and add our file. We can do that by going to file and append. And I think I have a tutorial on append, append. I'm not sure if it's out, but when it does come out, I will um, connect it to this tutorial. So let me look and see if we can find where this is. Our pop line tutorials and pop line correct version object. And we're gonna import the circle and append. Good. And this is indeed what we're looking for. All right, so when appending, it will use the same viewpoint um, that you used to do the original file. So it's always good to use the same viewpoint. You know, if I change this to say one, and then to have a different viewpoint right here, we see that we, we would be looking at the side of this pop and not the top. So try to be consistent with your viewpoints. I suggest um, seven for 2D motion graphics simply because it's the original viewpoint you know it's the one that we all learned about in math school when we're in high school talking about math and Cartesian planes so the movement is familiar and predictable okay let's go ahead into our camera mode while we're looking at this so we have this here but this is a bit small and I want to change the color also so first I'm going to go into Fact first, let's change the color, have it selected by right clicking it. I'm gonna go into our properties editor. I'm gonna go into the material tab. That's this burgundy circle right here with the transparent um, boxes. And I'm gonna change this to a lighter color. Yeah, I think this light green looks good. And uh, yeah, that's the first thing. And next we're going to go ahead and increase the length of this stretch because right now it, it stretches but it's a bit small in the stretch so we want it to stretch further and because of the way that we did the pop line in the previous tutorial we can go ahead and make an easy adjustment to make it stretch further we're going to go to right move as that controls the movement to the right hand side and we are going to just go to the zero and just increase the value Good. Then we're going to press tab or go to edit mode from the object 3D from the 3D viewpoint um, file menu system. So go to edit mode. Good. Um, now we have a right move. This is where it ends. So we're just going to go ahead and press B for border select or box select, or you can go to select tool. And this select option is activated when you're in edit mode and go to border select right here so we're going to press b select all of these and we're just going to stretch it out a bit 
I think here is good. Good. So if we start to animate it now, we see that it does indeed move to the length that we want it to move, but we also need to move the right finish as well to match up with this length so that it has a complete transition. Good, so with that now, we're gonna go back to the beginning. Um, we're going to go to a right flip, make sure right flip is 100%, and go to right move, make sure that's 100%. And similar to the last tutorial, you know, we're gonna go to, we're gonna create a plane. So hit Shift and A, mesh plane. Good, we're gonna go ahead and go into edit mode with this plane. So we're creating the plane in object mode and then we go back into edit mode pressing tab. And, or you can go down here to go to edit mode. So we're gonna delete these two vertices here. And we have these two vertices right here. And we delete it with the delete key and you hold shift to select both of the vertices at the same time. Good. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my magnetic tool. Make sure it's selected to a vertex and I'm going to move this down. Good, so just right click and move it. Good, and you hold your right click as you move. So I'm gonna zoom in to make sure that it's connected to the right thing. And let's move it about here. And indeed it's connected to the edge. And let's zoom in here. We're zooming in with the middle mouse button, by the way. And we have it here. So we have the two vertices that we want, you know, um, attached to. And let's go ahead and duplicate this and zoom in once more. Press tab and we're going to attach it to the second vertice. Good. And it's attaching it to the vertices on this circle, this um, cut out circle piece here, which is what we want. So now we have this as our guides. We're gonna go ahead and select our you know original pop line. And with it selected, we're gonna go on to a right finish. We're going to go press tab to go to edit mode. And we're gonna go ahead and hit Control and I because we want this selected, we don't want this one. So we're gonna invert the selection. Good, and with all of this selected, we're going to pull this X handle, which is this red arrow. I'm just gonna pull it across until it snaps to the lines. And we're gonna zoom in. You can see if it snapped to the correct line. It looks like it is. Good, and now if we increase the value, okay, it looks like it snapped to the wrong line. Just snap it to the right one. Let's go ahead and select view and snap. So the correct line. All right, so now it's snapped to the correct line. We see that the, um, the vertices cover each other completely and our pop is back intact. Good, working just fine. Good, so now let's go ahead and just delete these guys. We don't need them anymore. And we could start to look at the three different ways to create a starburst. So first up, let's, collect, let's select this. Let's scale it down with S. Scale it down a little bit about here. How is this looking? looking okay yeah I think this looks good and then again we're gonna go and go to our properties editor go to our um, object tab which is connotated by a cube um, then after that we go to object tab we're gonna move to our transform and we want to transform it on the Z by 90 degrees good so that way it's facing up Good, and we're gonna do this for each one of these, gonna duplicate it, move this across, duplicate it one more time, move across the X, so that it's 90 degrees up. Good. I think we can scale these down a little bit too, scale them down a bit, but I wanna scale them individually, 
don't want to scale them collectively so I'm going to go down here to the pivot options which is two circles connotated it's a drop down box I'm going to go to individual origins and scale it down good that way it fits in the viewpoint that's a nice little trick uh, nice little tip where you're going to need and I'm going to change it back to the medium point which is what it was originally and this way we you know we can see everything we don't want the line or the pop line going outside of the camera view so we have the three options here so let's look at the first option the first option requires that we use the snap tool and it requires that we have increment on and this is the most manual of the three you know so we are going to have to do a lot of the work ourselves so what we're going to do is just hit Control and D and R so shift and D sorry and R and as you pull the increments will as you can see it's taking a time to go around it's not going around perfectly smooth because it's moving by increments you know and you can actually decide increments but we're going to use the default increments here and we're just going to go around by two of them good so we're just shifting and going around shift D going around and RZ um, shift D RZ shift D RZ good and that gives us this we're gonna select all of them by holding shift hit shift D and RZ all right, and we're going to delete this top one so there's not two let's go ahead and select all of these again um, shift D RZ and shift D RZ good so it's gonna delete some duplicates that we got going on here and um, G and I think this is a duplicate too and delete good let's go ahead and take off the snap and if we run this through the animation we can see that we've gotten our first starburst effect now the benefits of this is that you have complete control over every single one of these the objects that you created you know um, none affects the other so if you want to change the colors of individual ones you can go ahead and do that you know the disadvantages of this one is that it's more manual more time consuming you know and um as a result it takes a lot of, it can take a bit of time to do you know and if you use the method that i use to do the pop circles you won't have to worry about the origin point but that's worth mentioning that the origin point needs to be at the beginning you know of the object animation if it's not then you're going to get awkward results you know but that's for i think that's for every single one of them you're going to have problems if you don't have the origin point in the at the um edge of the of the element so yeah but if you do it my way this way or the way that i have i did in the last tutorial then you shouldn't have that problem with any of the three methods good so that's the first that's the first one and the second one has to do with using the array modifier so what we need to do oh and just to top this one off you have to select everything to move it all at once so if you want to um, have something that controls all of them then we can hit shift a or go to add and go to empty and with empty we're going to select um, i prefer sphere like i have said before i prefer sphere empty but any empty can work good and we're just going to center this in the middle let's come out of view make sure that it's centered good i'm using my middle mouse button to pan and just bring it into the center as much as can there are easier ways to center these things but i'm just doing it by hand now for the sake of um just this part here and then you're going to go ahead and pretty much select everything here you know um you can press c and just hold shift and um, is it c no 
no C select, no just hold shift or you can use the, the boundary box and just select everything good and um, deselect this empty and yes that's a point if you left hold shift and left right click on the object that you wish to deselect twice it will deselect it good and then lastly select the empty so that it is bright orange while the others are dark orange and you can hit Control and P and we're going to set parent and we're going to keep the transformation so this way even though it's animating here if we don't want to have to select everything to move the animation we can just move the empty and everything moves with us good so that is the first method finished so we're going to look at the array method here and for this you have to do a couple of things the first thing is that we'll have to apply the transform of this right here and by applying transform we're going to hit i think it's shift and a good and we're going to apply the location particularly so we want this to become a zero location great so right here um, you can apply the um, location but for this for this for the piece which is the line pop itself we just want to bring all of the location to zero first we can move it afterwards but it's better if you move everything to zero and then we're going to apply the with control and a we're going to apply the rotate we're going to apply the rotation and scale so you'll see all the rotation and the scale goes back to default values whereas the object does not move the what this means is that we are resetting the transformation um, origin points of the where it was originally to where we want where we have it now good so with that now and everything has been set back to the default values you know we can move on to the next step which is to create a which is to create an empty uh, i'm going to go ahead and create this empty and call use a sphere i know i love the sphere and we're going to set the location to zero just the same way that we set you know our line pop to zero let's go ahead and just scale this down a bit good and then lastly we're going to create a circle so i'm going to use a circle here and we're going to set this to zero too good now this can this circle can be anywhere because it's going to be our control point but for this tutorial you know just for ease of movement we're going to put this at the center too and you know let's go ahead and apply its scale apply the scale so hit control and a and apply the scale so everything has been zeroed and centered and the scale and rotation applied so first up we're going to click our line pop and we're going to go to our modifier tab in our properties editor and we're going to add a modifier and what we're looking for is the array modifier which is in the second um, list at the top and immediately you see that the array modifier is adding more of our lines good and the animation is retained great so we see this here so we're just going to go ahead and um, increase it a little bit but the next step is that we want to have an object offset so if we see object office offset we just want to click that we're going to click this dropper this dropper tool right here and we're going to select the object that we want to use to, for the offset i'm going to select the empty good so you see the empty selected i did set the scale of the empty oh i didn't set the scale of the empty my bad i have to apply the scale so let me just hit Control Z and apply the scale. So I thought I applied the scale of the empty. Good. So let's go ahead and do this again. Um, let's set the ob object offset. Good. So for the next part now, if we hit R and Z and rotate, we can see that we are able to rotate these uh, line pops around using the using the um using the empty 
So we're going to go ahead and just parent the empty to this circle. Good, and we're going to use it and just keep transformation. So instead of moving the empty, we're just going to move the circle to get the effect that we're looking for, and that will move the empty for us. Good. So for the next step now, and that's to make sure that the offset is not edited, you know, by accident anytime. And uh, we can go ahead and play about with some features here, you know, as to how we want it. But what we really want is we want the offset X to be maintained. So we're not going to change any of these other values. And we're just going to go ahead and rotate it around the center. And we have this. And if we go to our original, oh, let's just rotate it again. Go to our original and let's increase the count a bit. Good. And let's just rotate it. And we can see that, you know, as we are moving, you know, we can move around this too. We can see that we are getting all sorts of weird and wonderful effects. So you have to go through and find the equal increment amount by rotating. And we're basically just pressing R and moving around. But we can see how this thing how this thing is responding and how it's working. Right. So you have a little bit less control, but you can still create as many pop, pop lines as you want. And with this method, you can just add pop lines. You know, um, you can just add them yourself. You don't have to really worry about you know what's going to happen if you. You don't have to really um, consider the amount that you have to increment by. You can add as many as you want, and it just goes. It just adds itself to the array quickly. And this is a big benefit if you are short on time or you don't know how many lines you specifically want. But as much as this method is very cool and can provide other effects, it does have limitations. And the first limitation is that because you're using shape keys for the animation of the line pop because you're using shape keys then you cannot apply the array modifier so in the instance that you want to change say the color of the second one but not the first one you won't be able to do that because they're all copies of the same object and as such you have to use the same color for everyone here good Another, def another problem is that in order to move it you have to select the empty and the circle at the same time and move it around so you have to select three things if you select just the empty you'll get an offset if you select the circle you'll get an offset and if you select this you'll get an offset so at the end of the day you have to select all three of these to move it around good so the disadvantage is color and you have to move all three of them to move them around but you can get some weird effects and they are particularly fast good and if you play about with it enough you can get some very interesting starbursts here you can see this starburst that looks like um something out of star wars here yeah yeah with it with the starburst are sort of um staggered and they look a little bit dysfunctional but this makes it look like a very well cool starburst here so that's the second way and the third way requires using link clones so we're going to use the same increment method and we're going to duplicate them but we're going to create linked clones so let's go ahead and do that if i go up to this point in the time frame and we're going to use instead of shift d we're going to use alt d good and we're going to turn on the snap and we're going to make it incremental and we're just going to press r so Alt D each time and R using the increment Alt D R Alt D R um, Alt D R Alt D R Alt D R Alt D and R 
of normal or the R. Good, so go ahead and select all of these. Good, I'm gonna duplicate this with um no alt d to duplicate sorry r and just rotate alt d to duplicate r and rotate and one more alt d r and rotate all right and by using this method you know um all oh let me just rotate this a little bit more all of the objects involved are linked animation to each other so let's go ahead and show you what we mean here for the array we know that if we mess about with the animation of one it affects all of them so if we go to the shape key menu um, under the mesh in the properties editor and begin to move the relative bar we can see that the animation is being changed for every single one of these um, object so we know that the animation is shared between all of these for the first one if we move it we already see one changing and that's because each one of the objects are individual so they do not relate to each other for this one you know it takes the advantages of the first one but adds a linked ability so we can go ahead and move one and it moves all of them and if it comes to a point where we wish to unlink them to create to become individual objects you know we can go ahead and select an object you know individual one and press u and we can make it a single user of certain elements we don't have to make it a single user out of everything so say i wanted to change the color of every second value here we can go u and make the material and text different and then go to the material tab and give it a gray okay it doesn't seem to be changing right here let's go ahead and give it a different color nope object data material and data let's try that okay so you have to hit um, object data and material text data not just material and text so if we go and select these and say um, you and go to object data material and text and then go ahead and change it to this green and we can see that the green is changed for each one but well, it looks like we have to do it individually because try to double select more than one but it doesn't seem to do it let's go ahead and test that green Let's go and select these two and go again and say you and object and data and material. Try to change it to green, right? So you have to select each one that you're going to change and change them accordingly. Good, but you have the ability to change the color of individual objects as well as keeping the animation linked. So these are the three methods for a starburst. Um, again, also like the first one, just before I close out, um, you can, for the first one, you can definitely use um, an empty, just circle, um, not circle, let's use a sphere empty, like before, scale it down, let's take off increment, and take off snap altogether, put this in the middle, Good, and then select everything, you know, as well as the empty, and hit Control P, keep transform, and this way, when you rotate it, you know, or you move it, you know, you move everything at the same time, and make sure that when you are parenting it, you know, you come out of the camera mode to move it, make sure that it's um in the center as we want it to so that you don't have distortion good so i mean that wraps up the starburst tutorial if you enjoyed the tutorial give it a thumbs up if you have any questions be sure to ask i'll do my best to answer them um if you have any ways to do things better you know for the starburst i would appreciate that go ahead and leave that in the comments um but yeah i think this is a good coverage of it remember to look at the pop line tutorial because I won't go through the pop line because we'd already done it. 
but I use the same pop line that I did in the previous tutorial for this starburst tutorial. All right then. So if you enjoy the tutorial and you learn something, you know, um, go ahead and subscribe. But until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design a new door. Later.